Hello and welcome to another 3 minute game pass, I'm Nathan and today I'm going to tip this game pass game is worth your time and bandwidth. Today's game is Gears 5, the coalition is back and war is over as the franchise is now just called Gears, which honestly makes more sense because I haven't said the of war part in normal conversation since Gears 2. See, I, I just did it right then. I can't even help myself. That wasn't even in the script. Anyway, is Gears 5 good? Gears 5 is a PC and Xbox cross release that features crossplay and cross save. Additionally, it is Series S and X upgraded for better frame rates and visual fidelity, and the game lasts about 11 to 14 hours for the campaign. What exactly is Gears 5? Well, it's another cover based third person shooter and a continuation of the story in Gears 4. However, this one has two tricks up its sleeve a semi open world campaign and a kick ass horde mode. In the campaign, you start as Boring Face JD for the first part of the game in a linear style Gears mission, but jump ahead and we find out pretty quick that the main character of Gears 5 is actually Kate JD and the robot Jack, who set off on an open world quest to find out who Kate really is, as well as the origin of the Swarm and Locust. Once you hit that point in the story, the game changes to a semi-open world experience with a large map and a vehicle skiff that you can use to get from place to place. Scattered across the map are small zones where you can go and participate in mini Gears fights, usually more challenging than the main game, that reward you with upgrades to your robot Jack, who you can command to do all sorts of stuff like stun enemies or scan the battlefield. Outside of the campaign, Gears offers its usual competitive multiplayer, but also has some improvements on the popular horde mode, which I love, so I'm going to talk about. First, they added a horde frenzy mode, which is just 12 horde waves instead of 50, which means you don't have to spend an entire day playing through one horde game. There's also a ton of classes to choose from, each of which have their own abilities and passive upgrades, as well as cards that you can earn and upgrade to augment the class further and kind of build your own character. These classes can also be used in the new game mode Escape, paired with the free on Game Pass, Hive Buster DLC. Escape basically tosses you in an area and you have to, well, escape with almost a weapon's unlimited timeline. Those are the PvE modes. Speaking of Hive Busters, there's also Hive Busters Campaign DLC, which is a three-player co-op experience following a crew of side characters trying to blow up swarm hives. It's fairly short, but each character has their own unique abilities that you have to use together, which is actually quite a bit of fun if you can get two friends to play it with you, even if it is pretty short. So yeah, Gears 5 has a boatload of content, so much I can't talk about at all in this review's time frame. Some minor improvements to the Gears combat, like being able to fire heavy weapons while moving, an improved horde mode, and more. What I like about Gears 5, well, the semi-open world is a great way to freshen up the usually linear Gears campaign, allowing you to pick and choose where you explore, making the world feel more interconnected than it did before. I think this is a good idea, and I hope they carry it on to future Gears games. This game also looks incredible, running at 60 FPS on modern hardware, and having some really great graphical fidelity and touches. This is definitely a looker for the console, and it's really great, especially on series systems. And lastly, this is my favorite horde mode out of all the Gears horde modes and this is coming from the guy who lived and breathed Gears 2 and 3's horse mode back in the day. The different classes, the card collection, the difficulty modifiers, the 12 and 50 way variants, daily hordes. There's so much here and it's so great, even if it's not exactly balanced. When it comes to the bad, this game still hasn't had its big Halo Infinite or Doom 2016 moment of figuring out what to do with this franchise to truly modernize it. And on that note, it does lack a bit of the punchy, bombastic soul of the franchise that existed with the original trilogy. A second downer is Escape Mode just straight up sucks. I appreciate it them trying to make a new PvE mode, and I like that you can make your own escapes, but this one is just completely half-baked and no one is ever playing it. And lastly, while I did enjoy the story, I'd still feel that Kate, like JD from the last game, doesn't really have the narrative weight needed to carry the entire campaign the way Marcus Phoenix and the original crew did. So it does do better in this game than in 4, but it uh, still could use some work. There's no right game scenario on a three-point scale, must-play, maybe consider, don't bother. I do think Gears 5 is a must-play. It had a really rough launch that I think turned a lot of players away, but now in 2022, I feel like it's in a really good spot, and Coalition or writing the course where Gears 4 was just a bit of a retread. Again, it doesn't have that injection of new ideas that this franchise needs, but it does feel like the Coalition is gaining confidence to change the series in some interesting ways in order to revitalize the franchise. With its fairly solid campaign and absolutely amazing PvE horde mode, I think Gears 5 is a great addition to the franchise, and I really hope that the Coalition continues to improve and completely knocks Gears 6 out of the park. That's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching, and go out there and enjoy the hell out of Gears 5.